Nemo was a little clownfish who lived a quiet life with his dad, Marlin, on the Great Barrier Reef. Nemo longed for adventure, but Marlin worried about the dangers of the ocean. He barely let Nemo out of his sight. Nemo! Marlin! Mr. Ray! On the first day of school, Marlin overheard Nemo and his new friends daring each other to swim out over a steep cliff. Come on, Nemo! How far can you go? Shel Sheldon. Dad. Pearl. Marlin panicked. Nemo! You know you can't swim well. I can swim fine, Dad, okay? Nemo darted up toward a boat on the surface. As Nemo swam, a diver appeared behind him. The diver pulled out a net and caught Nemo. Nemo! Then he returned to his boat and sped off, accidentally knocking one of his masks overboard. Marlin chased after the boat, but it was too fast. Has anybody seen a boat? Please! Marlin soon bumped into a blue tang fish named Dory who offered to help. Hey, I've seen a boat. Yeah, it went this way. Follow me. When Marlin followed, Dory whirled around. Stop following me, okay? What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. Dory looked surprised, then shook her head sadly. I'm so sorry. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Figuring Dory couldn't help him, Marlin turned to leave and found himself face to face with a shark. Bruce. The shark invited Dory and Marlin to a get together in an old sunken ship. Inside the ship were two other sharks and together they pledged Fish are friends, not food. As they spoke, Marlin looked up and saw the diver's mask. Dory noticed some writing on the strap. It might be a clue to help them find Nemo. Anchor. Chum. Bruce. Marlin and Dory quickly left the party, carrying the mask. Miles away, Nemo had been taken to a fish tank in a dentist's office. A goofy gang of tropical fish lived there. The fish and their friend, Nigel, a pelican, Pass the time by watching the dentist work. 
Deb and flow. Gurgle. Bloat. Bubbles. Nigel. Peach. Bloat. That night, Nemo learned that he would be given to Darla, the dentist's niece. The tank gang warned him that Darla's fish never live for very long. Their leader, Gil, took charge. We're gonna help him escape. Gil explained that if someone could jam the water filter, the dentist would take the fish out of the tank to clean it. When he put the fish in plastic bags, they could escape by rolling out the window and into the harbor. But who would be brave enough to break the dangerous filter? Bloat. Gill. Bubbles. Deep in the ocean, Dory and Marlin were in a dark canyon. Marlin struggled to hold on to the lighted antenna of a dangerous anglerfish so that Dory could read what was written on the mask. P. Sherman 42, Wallaby Way City. Marlin and Dory headed for Sydney. Suddenly, Dory bumped into a teeny tiny jellyfish. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine. But Squishy wasn't alone. Soon they were surrounded by an entire forest of deadly jellyfish. The jellyfish stung Dory and Marlin too, making them feel weak and tired. As the ocean faded around him, the last thing Marlin saw was the shadow of a giant sea turtle. When Marlin woke up, he was lying on the sea turtle's shell. The turtle introduced himself. Dude, name's Crush. Dory. Marlin told Crush and his son Squirt the story of the search for Nemo. Squirt told the story to a lobster, the lobster told a dolphin, and soon the news spread all the way to Sydney, where Nigel the pelican heard it. Nigel sped off to the dentist's office to tell Nemo your dad's been fighting the entire ocean looking for you. And the word is he's headed this way right now to Sydney. Really? Nemo realized that if he was ever going to get home, he had to be brave too. He took a deep breath and carefully jammed a pebble into the tank's filter, stopping its swarming blades. Soon the tank would be so dirty, the dentist would have to clean it. But in the morning, the tank was still clean. The filter had been changed during the night, 
ruining their escape plan. Then the dentist slipped a net into the water, capturing Nemo. The dentist started to hand Darla the bag, but then he saw Nemo inside, belly up. Nemo winked at his friends. He was only pretending to be dead. The gang cheered. He's gonna get flushed down the toilet. He's gonna get out of here. Outside Sydney, Marlon and Dory had met Nigel, who flew them straight to the dentist's office. The pelican soared inside with two fish in his beak. Marlon saw Nemo floating upside down in the bag. Nemo! Marlon thought his son was dead. Nigel returned to the harbor. He dropped Marlin and Dory into the water. Marlin swam out to sea, leaving Dory. We were too late. I'm going home now. After Marlin left, Nemo swam out of a nearby pipe. He had been flushed. Nemo spotted Dory swimming in circles. Are you all right? I'm Nemo. Ah! You're Nemo! Dory hugged him happily. Nemo and Dory searched for Marlin, spotting him in the nearby fishing grounds. Daddy! Nemo! I'm coming, Nemo! As they swam toward each other, a big net dropped into the water and captured lots of fish, including Dory. But Nemo knew exactly what to do. Together, the fish swam down until the net broke. Everyone was free. Several weeks later, Nemo was back home and ready for school. This time, Marlon was ready too. He knew that his son could take care of himself. Nemo waved as he swam away. He swam back and hugged Marlon. Love you, Dad. Marlon smiled. I love you too, son. Now go have an adventure.